All right, welcome back uh, to the next video in our distance learning series. Hope you guys are doing well and you're, you're staying safe and uh, everything's good at home. Uh, today we're going to talk about inverses of functions. Um, pretty straightforward topic, really. There's it's a four-step process. Um, one of the steps uh, might be kind of more steps in itself, but overall, it's a, it's a pretty easy process once you see some examples going on. And you've done it, I think, before also in algebra, in algebra one. Uh, but again, just like everything else we've been doing, a good idea to have a paper and uh, something to write with as we go through these examples here. So first of all, what is an inverse? Uh, what is that? What does the word inverse mean? Well, from dictionary.com, I got this right off of there. Uh, it is a quote reversed in position, order, direction, or tendency. So, how can we apply that to a function? Well, before we get into uh, full blown functions, let's take a look at, at some points and just kind of see what happens and, and apply that definition to a set of points. So I give you just uh, five simple points there, and you see those. If I graph those on an x y axis, they look like that, right? Now, what if we just apply that? What if we literally take those first three words in the definition and we just say let's reverse position? So instead of x y, let's write the inverse as y comma x. So just switch those two values. Well, then it becomes zero one. 1, 3, and so on. And if we graph those points, you see that's what it is. And, and in fact, that is all there is to it, really. Uh, it, you're, it's just a matter of switching the x and y values. Okay? Now, we're not going to spend too much time graphing these things, uh, mainly because of the whole distance learning environment. It's a little bit harder to do that. Uh, we're going to do more of the algebra behind it, but I do want you to look at this graph real fast and see if you can answer this question. Can you tell, is there a line that you could actually name uh, that each of those points is reflected over? Well, it turns out that it's that line right there. And if you remember back from your algebra one days, um, that's your parent function, your parent linear function. So that means whenever you do an inverse, and even though we had these simple set of points here, this would happen every single time that inverses are reflected across a line y equals x from the original function. And again, it's an important point to remember uh, that it happens every single time with inverses, okay? So how can we apply that to uh, actual functions? So if we know that inverses are created by switching the x and y values, let's apply that to a whole equation, right? So here are the steps. And there's, again, there's four steps, and there's only four steps, okay? So the first off, a lot of times you're going to be given a, a function in function notation with that f of x symbol. So we're going to just replace f of x with y because it does mean the same thing. Once we do that, we're going to literally switch the x and y variables, just like we did with the points, but now we're going to do it kind of symbolically with all the points at once. We're going to solve that for y, and this is where some algebra comes in, so there may be some, some additional steps you have to take to get y by itself, if you guys know how to do that already. And then finally, when we actually write the answer, once we get y by itself, we have our inverse, and we're going to use this special notation here this f minus one of x, that's not a power of volts. That's all that's saying is that's the notation that we use to denote that we found the inverse, okay? So let's go and jump in on some examples here. I, I do have quite a few examples. Uh, I encourage you, uh, as, we, as we go through the later example, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do it by yourself before I go through the solution. Okay, so here's the first one. So we're gonna start out pretty pretty straightforward and then later on we're gonna get um, some, 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 some multi-step ones. But here's our f of x equals 3x minus 2. So again, step one, replace. So we're just gonna, instead of f of x, we're gonna write that as y equals nothing different, okay? Step two is we're gonna switch. 
So literally switch the x and y values. Don't overthink it. Just switch places. So now we have x equal 3y minus 2. And now we're going to do the algebra to solve that for y. We want to get y by itself. So what's our first step? We're going to add 2 to both sides. And then what's left over? Got to get rid of the 3. How do we do that? So we're going to divide 3 on both sides. And you can just leave it like that, folks. You know, once you have y by itself, there's different ways you could write that, but that is 100% okay. So we have that quantity x plus 2 divided by 3, and that's it. So now we now that we have our inverse, we don't want to write that as y because it's kind of confusing with the original function. So we want to use our new notation that we have at f minus 1 of x equals our result, and that is our answer. You're done. You're done. Okay? Now, how can you be sure that you actually did do the right thing, right? So a lot of times, you know, in the past few weeks when we've been doing some solving stuff, I've said, you know, it's important we go back and check our answers. Well, we can do that with inverses also. So the way we do that is we plug in the inverse in back into the original function. It's called taking the composition. Once, uh, once we do that, if it simplifies down to just x, then you indeed did find the inverse. Okay, so what does that look like in this case? So we're going to take that whole x plus 2 over 3, you can take that whole thing and plug it in to x in the original function. So what would that look like? Well, it would be, it'd be this. So three big parentheses are inverse, and then that minus 2 still on the end. And then just simplify it. But look what happens. We have those two threes, and they're just going to cancel out. That leaves us just with x plus 2 minus 2. And lo and behold, that is x. So as soon as that happens, then we know that we have found the inverse. OK? Uh, by the way, it'll work the other direction, too. If you have plugged the original function f into the inverse, and simplify that, that's also going to be x. So the composition that we do either inverse into the function or the function into the inverse, both directions will end up being just plain old x. OK? So again, once, they, once you know that works, you're done, and you go on to the next question. So here's our next one. So we have f of x equals 1 half x plus 7. Same deal. Replace it, so y equals, same thing. Switch the x and y, so x equals. Now we just solve that. So again, just mind your algebra, subtract 7 from both sides first. Now, some, some, sometimes we get a little freaked out by fractions or something like that. But remember, we're just doing the opposite. So we can multiply both sides here by 2, right, to get rid of the 1 half coefficient. And we end up with 2 times x minus 7. And once you have that y by itself, you're done. So there is your inverse. So f minus 1 of x, the inverse of f is equal to 2 times x minus 7. And again, I'm not going to check all these, but I'm going to check a couple more just to make sure you see that the process works with regards to plugging that inverse back into the function. So again, same step, we do that composition. So we take that whole thing, 2 times x minus 7, plug it into x in the original. And again, the, the 1 half and the 2 will cancel out, leaving you with x minus 7 plus 7. We can just plain old x, and that gets our check mark. So we, so we know that we did find the inverse correctly. By the way, uh, on this inverse here, if you, if you had written that as 2x minus 14, if you distribute that through, obviously completely OK. You don't have to, though. So either way is okay. So let's do another example, just another linear function, uh, just to make sure you do this. And again, I, I do encourage you, if you want to pause the video for just one second and work through this on your, on your own, and then um, go and start playing the video once you finish the inverse, and then you can check your answer that way. So again, first thing, replace the f of x with y. Switch the x and y. Solve 4y. So again, add 5 to both sides first. 
And then if you have a coefficient there, just multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal, pardon me, the reciprocal would be four thirds. So multiply that on both sides. And then that's going to be your inverse. <clears throat> and then just rewrite that with your inverse notation. And that's going to be your answer. Okay. And again, hopefully you went through, we did this on your own. Uh, you went through and checked that answer yourself. So again, take that whole thing, plug it into the x. The coefficients, three fourths, four thirds, they cancel out. And just leave me with x. Okay. Now I'm gonna I'm not gonna continue checking these answers. You should check them. Uh, but in the interest of time, just to, just to kind of cut down some of the time in the video, I'm just gonna do three more examples with some powers of x. So you can see how that works. <coughs> And then, uh, and then, kind of get this all get this all finished up. Okay, so here's our next example. So now you see, it works the same way, guys. It's just going to be a couple, maybe a couple extra steps on the outer side, but you're still going to do, you're still going to replace the y. You're still going to switch the x and y. Okay, nothing changes. And again, do the algebra. So in this case, subtract one from both sides, divide by two. But now we have one extra step. Now we got to get rid of this power. So how do you undo a third power? Well, you do a cube root. So you just do the big cube root of both sides, and boom, you are done. Okay, and you, you rewrite that with the inverse notation, and you're set. Okay. Example number five. We'll do one more. Now we'll we'll get one with a with a radical in there. So how do we undo a radical? And you begin, always, you're always thinking about undoing, right? Always doing that opposite function. So here we have the square root of three minus five X. Again, you should go to repeat it on your own now. Replace, switch, solve, rewrite. So we're gonna replace the F of X with Y. We're gonna switch the X and Y values. We're going to solve. Now, what's the first thing we're going to do here? If I want to get y by itself, what's the very first thing we have to do? Well, in this case, we got to undo that wrap, right? So how do you undo a square root? Well, you square both sides. So you got x squared equals 3 minus 5y. Continue getting y by itself. So x squared minus 3, and then divide by the negative 5. Don't forget that negative sign. So we have that. Okay, and then that's your answer. You rewrite it with your function notation. Now, I do want you to notice, I don't want this to confuse you, but that negative five, I put that negative in front of the fraction. It can go either place. It's not, it's not wrong to write it underneath with the five. It's just more common to see the negative sign written out front. Okay. And I got one last example. And again, I'm gonna encourage you to uh, pause the video real fast, work through this one on your own. This one has quite a few steps uh, on the solving bit, but to go and pause the video, try to do this on your own and get back together and go through the solution real fast. So you should know, again, nothing changes with regard to process, replace. So write the f of x and y, switch the x and y, and then just start getting the y by itself, piece by piece. Okay, so we just start solving this thing. What's the first thing you got to do? Well, you got to add four. So we're going to add four to both sides. Now we got to undo the coefficient that five halves. Right? We have to isolate that uh, the parentheses first. So how do we undo a coefficient? Multiply by the reciprocal, which is two or five. So multiply both sides by two fifths. Now we have to undo the squared power. So take the square root of both sides. And then just subtract two. Now the important thing to note here is that minus two is outside of the radical symbol. And then once you have that though, you rewrite it with your function notation and you are finished. Okay, so that is the entire process of Find the inverses. It really it never changes. Um, 
it can get a little trickier sometimes if you have rational functions and stuff like that, but we're not going to get too far down into there. The main goal about doing these inverses is what's coming up in about a week or so when we start doing uh, exponential functions and solving those kind of things. So that's kind of why we had to go back to the inverse. So. so just to kind of wrap everything up, uh, I'll, I'll put this last screen up here, uh, this, if, in case you need to write that down with regards to the steps. So again, replace the f of x with y, switch the variables, solve for y, just be mindful of your algebra, and then rewrite using your function notation, that little minus one, okay? Again, really a good idea to check your work and check that the composition of f and f inverse is equal to x when you plug that in. And also remember from uh, the beginning of this video, remember anytime you're talking about graphs of a function and its inverse, they're always going to be symmetric like that line y to the x. Okay? Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Again, there's going to be a, a, an assignment on finding inverses uh, put up on Classroom uh, in conjunction with this video. So if you have any, any other questions, feel free to contact me either by logging into the Google Meet Room uh, or by sending me an email or your teacher. And feel free to uh, also uh, share this video with anybody else going through the same thing. Subscribe for other videos as we continue this distance turn through the end of the year. Again, hope you guys are safe. Uh, stay well.